Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode in our ultimate base 3.2. In the ultimate base 2.0. Ah, good times we've had so far. In between the episodes I decided to send Frankie over with a whole bunch of steel in order to fix the aluminium volcano tamers. Now we can already see some aluminium has accumulated so we need to fix this quickly and I figured that there are only a couple of tiles that are the problem. Namely the tile where the aluminium is gonna spill over and the tiles where the aluminium is accumulating. So I figured there's actually one thing we can do. We can go down here, do the same thing right there and then this tile here should be made out of steel. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. This is gonna be steel and then another one that's gonna be steel right there. We have to do the same thing with the power, so probably this wire here is going to be heated up very quickly. Yeah, it's already got a temperature of 370 degrees, so we want to go ahead and actually exchange that. We're going to also make this one here out of steel, this one specifically, and then also this one there. And we just go ahead and connect the aluminium wire. Now I want this to be done fairly quickly because it is important we get this working. We can already see some aluminium has accumulated there. Also the volcanoes are about to erupt, they erupt like every cycle at the moment. Also looking at the temperatures, thanks to the temp shift plates we actually can distribute it fairly quickly. The oil over here is 67 degrees, in the center right there it is 75, so that's just a few degrees difference. And also the aluminium is cooling down, but as long as it is not a thousand degrees anymore I'm actually pretty happy. You know, I don't think we're gonna see this done until this volcano erupts, but I guess we can work around it. Marie shouldn't get hurt in her atmo suit. But there we go, some more aluminium, we will be able to see it swap over. It is going into the oil, which in turn is heating up, but it's a back and forth because the heat is being distributed. Yeah, there we go. There we can see the aluminium piling up. Mm, this is really nice. So now the heat can slowly move over. We already have a little bit of steam going on. That means all of the water is soon going to be converted. And then not much later we will be able to suck out the heat through the steam turbines. And look at that. It's over and in just 1.2 cycles they're going to erupt again. This one even one cycle. Marie completed everything again so the machinery can run. I kind of want to check out the heat distribution now. Okay, there we go. The aluminium is actually coming upstairs at a hundred degrees. Everything below 200 degrees is going to be acceptable to me. And will you look at that? We also get so much of it. So now we have an unlimited supply of refined aluminium. We only need to ship it to the main planetoid. I almost forgot we still have Frankie in this rocket. I'm so sorry. Y you're free to go now. Right now I'm still waiting for more berry sludge to actually be produced. I used the first 8000 calories to supply my pilots. Maybe we should do some space exploration or harvesting of certain materials. There's almost 70 tons of useful material. Well, we're not gonna need it right now. Space junk, we can get an artifact. I also sent some more coal over to Smelliol. How much do we have at the moment? 30 tons, so that should suffice for a while. But yeah, Otto is too stressed at the moment. I would like to swap his food with a berry sludge and hold the phone. Ah, we have the chlorine in here, fortunately enough. We did get some slime for some inexplicable reason. But thanks to enough chlorine, nothing happened. But yeah, as mentioned, ultimately I would like to upgrade to berry sludge for my fellow duplicants offshore. Another thing we might have to tackle soon is our water usage. We probably need to go ahead and activate the second cool steam vent we have available. This shouldn't be too much of a problem. I wanted to get my cleaning station into a better spot soon enough anyways. Not 100% sure where we would move it to. However, we should have enough space here using up some of the grub grub farm to make a similar design such as this. It's been working phenomenally all this time, so I really can't complain about that. It actually also looks like slowly but surely we're getting more barbecue, which is phenomenal. However, the entire food situation made me realize that we need to hurry up with Marie. So what I'm gonna try to focus on is her planetoid and actually wrap things up. She's got a salt water geyser. I really don't think we're gonna need that, at least not for a very long time. However, what I'm much more interested in is this double gold volcano thing that's going on here. 
and obviously also digging up the entirety of the terrain. So maybe now with this design slowly but surely in motion, we can go ahead and start digging up a few more things. Oh, you want to keep going, give us access to all the materials. Gonna dig everything up in this vicinity and then we just keep going. I guess we can move on with that ladder. Oh, and by the way, some also suggested to do something about the crushed satellite. We could harvest the radiation power it has. 200 rats, so maybe we can set up something that uses rat bolts. I mean, this would be good for an outpost anyway, so that we can go ahead and visit all these objects of interest. While Marie is digging out the terrain, I think there's something we can do for R2. Let me think. Yeah, it is time to move over some more materials, but I would like him to have an easy time with it. So why not set up an auto sweeper here? And we're also gonna need a conveyor loader. And then I guess we're gonna keep going with our conveyor system all the way into the export slot of the teleporter. How is this looking power-wise? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're exceeding the limit, but we're probably not gonna use all the machines at the same time. There we go. Atu is building the stuff. He's not gonna be able to make it into day cycle. Oh, well. Marie, all right, made some progress. We're also gonna need to help her bring up the materials. This should go fairly automatic if we don't want to waste any time. Or for shicks and giggles, we could just send over a whole bunch of rovers. By the way, maybe in today's comment section, let me know if you think I should start a new world because of all the updates that happened during the series. And of course, also let me know if you want me to continue in this playthrough. I'm actually up for both. We did not nearly achieve as much as I would have liked in this world. I knew it's gonna take time and I would never consider restarting if there weren't all these updates. But yeah, just food for thought for today's episode. Actually, at this point, I think there's really nothing we want to exclude. We can get everything from the main planetoid rather quickly. So we just say all priority 7 and then the auto sweeper should be filling this up. And it's just gonna keep going, giving our main base a endless flow of material. Wow, check this out. Just one cycle later and we've got all this progress already. Yeah, I wonder how long this is gonna take us. I mean, it's not much left. I just need to know what I'm doing with the salt water before everything dribbles down. But check this out. We have all this ice that we could use to make Marie last a little bit longer. So we don't even need the salt water. Maybe we just get rid of it. And we're gonna move this pipe up and over in order to connect with this guy. Which of course is just gonna get rid of the liquid. So we are destroying the salt water. Is this a good decision? I mean, it's water. Yeah, you know, I just can't do it. I can't get rid of so much resources, even if they might seem useless. Okay, wonderful. The items can now freely flow into the main base. And this is gonna take a while because I've been collecting materials on this spot forever. I mean, all the terrain that you can see dug out here, basically I accumulated in this spot. And now we're transferring it over. This is a big moment. Let's see what Marie is up to these days. Oh, looks like we have some hydrogen all over the place. Yeah, I'm gonna leave the salt water be for the time being. We have enough to do on the left side of the planetoid. And we also still wanna observe this. At the moment we are at 150 degrees. And it just depends a little bit on how quick we're gonna be cooling this down efficiently. I guess the hotter the temperatures, the more efficient we're gonna be. Um, let me see. Yeah, they're gonna be active for some more time. Like 40 cycles. So there's gonna be 40 eruptions with this guy. What a crazy bastard. But yeah, we can see the temperatures going down gradually. We just have to observe a little bit. At the moment, it's not at any dangerous levels. Okay, I think I'm just gonna let this run. It is a little bit of a waste of energy since we're not nearly fast enough with one rail. But that's all we got with the teleporter. Hold the phone. There's still no berry sludge. What's the problem? What are we missing? Hmm, this is really curious. I wonder if I calculated this correct with the amount that we actually need. But the system is working phenomenally. All the plants are very happy. It just could be that the rooms are a little bit too small. I mean, I calculated the food needs for three duplicants, but right now I'm not entirely convinced that was correct. You know, one thing that would actually fit in here is our battery box. We want a area full of jumbo batteries. And we might even be able to use one of the cooling loops we have going on here. But yeah, my thoughts are with Marie, who is suffering from uh, no, food poisoning. How did you manage to do that? There are just like 149 germs on there. Oh man, duplicants, let me tell you. 
So anyways, I was thinking we could hijack the cooling loop for the oxygen that is not gonna require a lot and then also run it through the battery room. What if we move out at this place, come up, we can use some bridges for the ethanol. Actually, let me just go ahead and plan this out. So if we had two bridges like so, then I could use this in order to get out of there. We can then go ahead and cool a whole bunch of batteries, come back down at this spot so we can hop over and join with this bridge. Yeah, that would actually be fairly easy to accomplish. Let's see where this actually takes us. So we want to go ahead and cut certain pipes and then these bridges are going to be built. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. That loop is running again. Let's go ahead and connect these pipes. This would then move up at least to here where we have the battery room on at least three levels. We can still use this ladder in order to get down, but I'm gonna replace it with plastic ladders. And then we're gonna need a whole bunch of metal tiles. So either aluminium or gold. I think I'm just gonna go with gold since we're gonna have a lot of that in the future. You know, preferably I would like to make this a closed room. So we're probably gonna end up filling this all up. Yeah, maybe as a first step, let me go ahead and get rid of the entirety of the terrain here. I could have approximately 10 batteries in here, but I think we can set it up a little bit more niftily. So instead of having the ladders here on the left side, we're gonna have it down the middle. I just noticed I only have 5 tons of iron left in this world. This is pathetic. Anyways, first battery would start right here. So this is where we start our batteries and then, hmm, let me actually see. I mean, since we have that heavy watt wire here, we cannot have a wall anyways. That means we're gonna use the ladders right there. Yeah, this is where we're gonna come up. That actually makes a whole lot of sense and it also adds up with the battery. So we can have quite a few of them. However, I'm gonna use up all my precious copper. I'm gonna be so sad. So gold tiles, that's what I want to exchange this with. Actually thinking about it, we of course don't have to go with the same old pattern. We can make this much more tight. Hmm, you know, this might just be worth it. Yeah, why the heck not? Uh, give me gold tile, please. Another set of batteries do that. Batteries do... The oh my gosh, that used up all my gold. In this case, I'm only gonna make every second row a gold tile. And the other one right here is gonna be granite. Actually, let's make the insulated layer here. This one here is gonna be granite. Then we have gold tiles, some more batteries, another granite layer, then some more batteries. And obviously this is gonna be our end point here. So this is gonna be another layer of igneous rock. Wonderful. That actually makes a whole lot of sense to me now. Alrighty, building this module, I decided otherwise again. I'm actually going to remove this ladder as well as the heavy watt wire and we're gonna make a ladder down the center. This is also gonna give me enough space for another steam turbine here. Actually, this is the perfect amount of space. We're gonna run the heavy watt wire also through the center. And then this row right here is actually gonna be the edge of the module. I love this idea. We need to get rid of certain things. For instance, this tile needs to go. And then I think I'm gonna leave a three wide gap in order to have it easier pumping everything out. I also decided that we're gonna go with granite instead of wasting all of our gold. That was kind of a maniac move that is probably unnecessary because the jumbo batteries aren't that demanding in terms of heat. But yeah, we now need to keep the game running and finally get this done. Now the question is, what are we gonna do towards the top? Because I do want some gases in here eventually. That means towards the top we don't even want to have this opened up. So no plastic ladders for you. We're still gonna need the heavy walk conductive wire that I'm gonna connect over here. Eventually this is gonna be exposed to space, so it won't matter much. Also towards the bottom, all of this is going to become a hydrogen room. There's actually one thing I totally forgot about and that is the transit tube access point. This spot right here would be awesome, but we need to reserve a spot for the transit tube itself. So instead what we could do is leave out three spots. This would also make it symmetrical with the batteries. We then have the transit tube going down the center here. And then just because we have another free spot, I think I'm gonna set up a fire pole here. So this transit tube is gonna go through here. I'm not yet sure what we're gonna do with the other batteries. I mean, eventually I don't really want them here anymore. I guess for every battery we hook up to the system here, we can remove one on the top at least. 
I'm actually gonna sacrifice some of my gold here in order to do just that. Wonderful. This is actually going to be a great project. And let me speed up the edges here so we can get this finished and get the proper layout going. Another thing we should initiate early is the pumping out of the rooms. I'm gonna set up a couple of these gas pumps here all over the place actually. And then we just go ahead and move the gases out of the way here. Oh man, sometimes I just love observing these duplicants. It's half of the fun. Same thing with city skylines. It's just great to see something develop that you planned out. You know, during this building project, there's actually another thing we could go ahead and do, and that is bring over the salt water into this world, because we could actually use it. As you can see, we are using up our water, and this could be a fairly easy thing to set up. Now, I'm actually hoping we can set up a liquid unloader right next to this. I mean, it looks like it would connect. So yeah, I guess we'll figure out whether or not we can daisy chain them. Gonna connect this to power and then we want to set up some pipes. Now these pipes here were reserved for the oil, but I guess we can cut it at this point and then use them for the water. Actually, we're not gonna need the input at all. Obviously, we want access to the output. So let's say I'm bringing this all the way over here into the base. We could then go ahead and set up a desilinator right here. If I actually build this out of gold, we're gonna have enough overheat temperature. Bring over the pipes into the desilinator and then I guess we can just output them here. And it's gonna be automatically brought over to our new system. So this means salt water would continue at this point. I guess we can hijack this pipe here. And in this case, I think I'm just going to exchange the module here, the liquid port unloader, with its loader variant. There we go. Said and done. Oh no, I don't want oil in this pipe. Ah, oh, what are you gonna do? Let's just connect this. Wonderful. So a couple of trips over to Gruesta and we should have taken care of our water supply. We should be getting approximately 9 tons of it with each trip, so not too shabby. You know, I think one thing is for certain, we're gonna need a whole lot more gold. So I'm gonna up the crafts to another 40. It's gonna... Oh, wait. I need to be careful. Yeah, my toilets are almost empty. So I'm actually gonna wait with that. Okay, looks like everyone still has enough to do. Even Otto, I believe, still has some building commands, as you can see. And then he needs to move things over. So let me just go ahead and make some progress on the builds we initiated so far. And then I'm gonna tune in back with you. Alrighty, we're back and as you can see, we've made substantial progress. I'm also already pumping out everything. We left with under a gram of breathable gases in here. I decided to not actually fill this up with hydrogen for the sole reason of this heavy watt conductive chime plate that is actually transferring heat over from the steam room. So instead, we're gonna keep everything cold using some liquid. I already set up some bottle emptiers on the left and the right and we're just gonna have a thin layer of liquid on each level. Now if I'm not mistaken we can actually go for oil. Yeah we still have plenty of oil here and obviously it's being produced constantly. Before I forget we should also send the rocket on its merry way. Let me actually check in here. Do we still have some berry sludge? Looks like it's actually been used up. One thing I would like to do is actually cut the power to the fridge. We don't need that if we use berry sludge. And we're gonna fill up the rocket with about 10 kilograms of it. And yeah, I guess with that out of the way, we're gonna send Frankie over in order to grab some salt water. And we're gonna make our way over to Growesta, just like that. Begin launch. Have fun, Frankie. I also already set the filters for the liquids everywhere, so we get brine, salt water and normal water in there. One thing I did at Growista, because we have such a cool biome right next to it, I actually started to tap into the cold of the biome here at the bottom. Now this is heating up much quicker than I anticipated, but it's a good thing we can start melting all the liquids here at the bottom. So I think what I'm actually gonna do is make a little aluminium pillar here, and all we have to do is make our way down there. If we want, we can set up another steam turbine right here. We should have the space for it if we move down a little bit. Actually, we don't even have to move down. I can just remove this layer instead. So I guess I'm actually gonna start filling this up. We're gonna make this a little bit larger all the way to this point. And at the same time, we're gonna make our way downstairs. I wanna start digging away the terrain here and then start building the aluminium pillar so that we can tap into the chill of this bone. And then we also keep expanding here and filling this up so we can still have this function as a vacuum. I also noticed some of the pipes actually broke. That is because I didn't leave enough space after the output. This means theoretically we could go ahead and join the pipes together at this point. I would want to build this up 
that means the bypass is going to move over and it's going to have a little bit more space before it joins the main line. And we would want to do the same thing here on the other side. It continues right at this point, goes into the bridge and then this here can move over and up. Should be an easy fix, theoretically. Something else I did, I sent over some barbecue back to R2, since we have the permanent storage that is working, deep freezing the stuff, therefore I could remove the meal ice farm again. We can now also finish the cooling system for our battery units here. I would be coming up at this point with my liquid, and then I'm guessing I'm just gonna move all the way up here, and we start wiggling things around. So I would be going through this layer, then down, through this guy, down. Oh, hopefully this adds up. Hmm, yeah, hold on. This is not really what I wanted to see. I think what we want to do is move through the main layer where we're gonna have our liquid. And then we can also move back using insulated pipes. This would then go down and rejoin with our current line. Actually, that requires one more pipe there. Wonderful. I think this is going to work phenomenally. Let's start introducing the liquid. Going to enable auto bottle for this, so somebody should be taking care of that quite immediately. And then we start filling up the bottom layer here with a thin layer of oil. Once that is done, we can then fill up this tile and do the same thing for the next layer and so on and so forth until we have about 33 grams of liquid on each layer. There we go. It actually already arrived. So before it actually empties everything out, I'm just gonna disable it. And then we can see we should have enough and the excess is gonna spill over the edge. Then we're gonna build this tile and we keep going. Whoops, totally forgot about my rocket. Is it being filled up? Oh, please, please, no. <laughs> I totally forgot to set this up. We wanted a liquid port loader that goes right there. Oh my gosh, you need to do this really quickly now. Looks like the tiny piece of crude oil we still have in here is preventing my salt water from continuing. So I guess we are gonna deconstruct it so we get the oil back in a canister. Should be a fairly quick procedure. Et voila, that's what I'm talking about. And now the salt water can flow freely. Though right now, as you can see, we're already filling up our own supplies because this guy isn't dormant anymore. Wonderful, we're actually done with the left side. I also filled up this little part here. Now we can deconstruct the bottle emptier, set up a tile here, and then everyone's gonna be happy. Looks like my cooling loop is actually done for this, so we are gonna connect it. Instead of it moving to the right, I want it to move to the left, and I guess this little piece here is not gonna be necessary anymore. And just like that, we should be cooling it down efficiently. Now I need to be careful, these guys are already heating up. Looks like I need to enable the swamp chart heart for Frankie. He is about to starve otherwise. Let me see you grab that food. Uh, okay, good. He's not gonna die. As for the rocket, it is more than halfway full. Good progress. Ah, look at that. We're actually almost done pumping it out. Just a tiny amount of oxygen left. The only problem about this new cooling loop is that I need a tiny bit more water. Look at that. We didn't even have enough in order to fill up the loop let alone accumulate some in the liquid reservoir. Wonderful, so far so good. I'm gonna let this play out a little bit. We have achieved a vacuum. And then after a couple of cycles, I'm gonna be back with another update. Well, 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 a couple of cycles later, we're almost done here. I also got myself a second steam turbine, not that it was already necessary. Looking at the temperature slowly but surely, they are evening out. And the water at the moment is still coming out cold enough. I'm actually thinking about using this area for a glass forge. Ah, no. Unfortunately, it is a little bit too high, though we could set it up here and move the transit tube over. In the meantime, I'm done at Grow Vista with walling everything off. This means we can make our way in here. All we need is a couple of tiles here, then we can take apart these two tiles and make our way in here to make this bigger. And it's basically just gonna accommodate another steam turbine. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, we're of course also pumping out the salt water that we've gathered, and therefore also resupplying it to our main base. You know, the longer I think about it, the less convinced I am. Even like this, the space is a little bit too tight, unfortunately. So let's quickly forget about that idea again and come up with something new for this space. One side is done here. Looks like we need to deliver a tiny bit of plastics. By now, our liquid tank is actually empty, so that is the perfect moment to do so. This time around, I'm gonna add some berry sludge and I'm gonna wait for the delivery. And we also send over some plastic. Let's maybe go with the two tons. As a matter of fact, let's send 20 tons. I have like 80 tons. And this way we'll never have to send plastic over again. In order to get to the lower parts here, we simply need to remove this tile, for instance. 
and I'm actually gonna do this on either side and then we can go ahead and hollow out this as well. Okay, looks like we're almost ready. I think I'm actually gonna launch the rocket. Frankie, I really hope you're ready. Let's launch this bastard. Wonderful, the rocket has arrived. Let's expel the plastic here and we are gonna sweep it up right away. And at the same time, we are filling up some salt water again. Wonderful. This means we're now capable of building another steam turbine, which I'm gonna do. I'm gonna connect this to some power and we only have to do the additional piping. So I'm guessing we can go straight over here. Yeah, shouldn't be too complicated. By the way, we already collected over 20 tons of refined metal just since we started this contraption. But yeah, over time we need more cooling, which is why I'm adding the steam turbines. For once, Marie actually gets a little bit of help. It must be her happiest cycle thus far. Alright, great. I think we're almost done here. I just expanded all the rooms. I already closed off the steam turbine rooms. If this amount of cooling is not going to be enough, we can always expand it. If I move this wall one more block over and remove the batteries, we would have the space for another steam turbine. So that is definitely worth thinking about and I'm gonna keep this explore. But right now we are cooling it down to 130 degrees. I'm not worried at all. Also the new battery module in the main base is working magnificently. Temperatures are evened out and we even have the space for a little something here. So I would say we can wrap up the episode in dignity. Maybe it is a little bit too... Oh, it's actually cold. Yeah, these freaking murph leaves actually want a little bit over 20 degrees. So maybe we're gonna reset this to 20 degrees here again. But yeah, other than that, I think we're good to wrap up the episode. Just check out the world thus far. I mean, for now, I would love to keep going with this and I might even have access to the world as it was in cycle one. And if I do, I will attach that in the description of the first episode. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's wrap it up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.